Hello and welcome back. It's been a while since my last video and so in this tutorial I'm going to cover how to do uh, another kind of loop which is the for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to call it, um, I don't know, for loopy. And then I'm going to create a class called um, for loop prac for for loop practice and include main. Okay, so if you remember back when we did the while loops, if you go back to the um, the lesson on while loops, a while loop is basically, or a loop in general, is a repeating if statement. So what happens is, is it does the body, and then um, if the uh, it, it checks the, if the condition is true, and if the condition is true, it does the body, then it checks the condition again, and if the condition is true again, it does it over and over and over. Uh, until the condition is false. So if you look at one of our old while loops, let's check this out, like this right here. Um, as long as apple is false, it'll keep doing this over and over and over. So anyways, a for loop. Um, for loop syntax is real simple. All you gotta do is type in for, and then you have three parts separated by um, uh, semicolons. But what I'm gonna do now is just show you a while loop and then convert it to a for loop. So just so you understand what's going on. So if I wanted to print hello three times, I'm gonna say, okay, so int i equals zero. And then I'll say while i is less than three, then I'm going to print um, hello. All right, so if I run this jump, right click run as Java application. Oh, whoops, <laughs> that's an infinite loop. I forgot to increment i, duh. So yeah, it was an infinite loop because i never changed. It was zero and it goes, oh, it's printing hello. And it's, oh, zero is less than three. Let's print it again, zero is less than three. So I printed an infinite number of times. So I stopped that and I made sure that I incremented it. That was a cool example, nice coincidence. Anyways, so i plus plus increments i so that it becomes one and then eventually two and then three and then it stops. So it prints hello, hello, hello three times, okay? So the three parts that we're going to take out of this while loop and put into a for loop are the following. This part, which I call the start. This part, which is called the condition. So the start is int i equals zero. The condition is i less than three. And then the part that I call counter. Okay. So I'm going to do the same exact loop or the same exact um, code, but using a for loop instead. So I'll type in four and I'm going to put int i equals zero. <coughs> And then let's comment this out so it doesn't get confused. And then I'm going to say as long as i is less than 3, right? That's the same condition as I have here. And then I'll have i++. plus plus. That's the counter at the end of the while loop. Okay. Some people like to call it incrementer. I like to call it counter because you can count down and up. You can increment down and up too, I guess. Anyway, so it starts at 0, goes up to, but not including 3. And it goes up by one every time, and then each time I'm just going to print um, hello. Alrighty, so if I, well let's just print hi so you know what, you'll see a different output than hello, hello, hello. When I run this guy, it prints hi, hi, hi. So as you can see, it does the same exact thing. The only difference is that all of my important, all the critical parts of the loop are all on one line. The start the condition, obviously the body, and then the counter. So the loop, uh, the for loop, the, the pattern that you're always gonna do is after you do the start, you test the condition, then you do the body, then the counter. Test condition, body, 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 counter. Blah, 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 blah. Over and over and over and over and over until this condition is false. Once this condition is false, boom, we jump out. If this condition is never false, it'll be an infinite loop. Let me give you an example. If I wanted to print LOL, I'm going to make an LOL bomb. LOL, right? And I'm going to say a condition that's always, 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 always um, true. So let's say like one or like four is greater than one. That's it. That's always true. It's never, ever going to be false. So when I run this, it 
prints, as you can see, it's printing LOL forever. And it's just not going to stop until I force quit it. So boom, let's force quit. Okay, so when do I use a for loop? When do I use a while loop? I use, I would recommend using a while loop if I don't know how many times something is going to happen. Like if it's a password protection program like we did in the previous um, tutorial. I don't know how many times they're going to enter it in wrong. So I'm going to use a while loop. But if I want to print, for example, LOL 10 times, I would rather use a for loop. That's just my personal preference. You can do whatever you want. But um, if I know how many times something is going to happen, I'm going to use a for loop. If I don't know how many some how many times something's gonna happen, then I use a while loop. Um, that's really it. Um, same kind of rule applies from if statements. If I only have one line of code that I want to be part of this for loop, I don't need curly braces. So in this case, I could just do that. But if I have more than one line of code, then um, I'm gonna definitely need curly braces. That's it. That's it. That's it for for loops. Um, in the next tutorial, I will show you how to use nested for loops to print quote unquote images. So that's what I'll do next, inshallah. Alrighty. Bye bye. Shawty's like a melody in my